Hi everybody, it's me, Jujitsu Housewife. I just woke up. I feel tired, really tired. I took my sleeping medicine last night that my doctor told me that I need to take to help me sleep, and uh, I'm super sleepy. But that's not the point of this. The point of this intro is um, I don't know how to feel still about it. I think I'll feel better once my doctor's appointment hits. But I have an emergency doctor's appointment Monday because my glucose test finally came in and it, I have unusually high, um, glucose, basically, um, sugar levels. And, um, the nurse called me yesterday and she told me I have diabetes. This is something new to me. And she says it looks like I came into my pregnancy with diabetes. And I don't know why my first doctor, when she checked my glucose, didn't tell me that I had diabetes. Because that's really important. And I have to get on a special diet. I have to take medicine. I have to um, pinch my... Well, I have to, like, poke my finger every hour. Well, not every hour. Every couple of hours every day to check my blood sugar and... It could explain why I'm really dizzy all the time and why I still feel fatigued and why I'm throwing up certain foods and a lot of things. Honestly, and it would explain a lot of things. The thing that I'm nervous about though, and they can't answer this for me, Monday, I'm not going to know until I give birth, is am I going to be walking out of my pregnancy with diabetes? Because some women just get diabetes while they're pregnant. I don't know how to explain that. Like, I'm not a doctor. But Monday, which is in, like, two days, uh, she's going to teach me how to do everything and how to monitor it, what kind of diet I need to go on for either the rest of my pregnancy or the rest of my life. So that's nerve-wracking. I'll keep you posted on Monday. I'll I'll post something, or on Tuesday, I'll give you my thoughts. So yeah, life is tough. <laughs> Till the next update, guys. Just got my EUV done. Ooh, I'm about to give it to my doctor. I'm in the elevator. So. Yeah, fun. So a lot of things have happened. It's been. A week since the beginning of this intro of the video when I got a phone call from my nurse saying I was a diabetic. So, I got an emergency appointment and I met with my nurse. I got a lot of things and a lot of uh, scary information about being a diabetic while pregnant. So, when you're a diabetic while pregnant it's different than being a regular diabetic because when you're a regular diabetic you're either type 1 or type 2 being a pregnant diabetic you're a gastrointestinal diabetic and it's it's different it's kind of hard to explain I'm not a doctor but um it's different basically so for me my sugar was way too high when I took my glucose tolerance test, you have to drink this goop that's basically a lot of sugar. And they need to see if your sugar will go down or if it will stay up. You know, basically see if you have diabetes. Mine stayed way higher than it was supposed to even after three hours of the testing. When they first took my blood, it was... 72 for my sugar which is only two points higher than the normal sugar level is and then it went up to 186 actually I think it almost hit 200 I have to recheck the um, test but the lowest it was was 186 after three hours and that's really really bad because your normal sugar level is supposed to be 70 not in almost the 200s so they knew then that I was diabetic. So I um, I have to poke myself four times a day to check my sugar levels. 
I don't know if you can see the bruises on my fingers or not. Is this one still bruised? Hold on. I'm trying to... <sighs> Some of them are healing pretty fast. But, um, I bruise easily. So right after I poke myself, I get a little bruise and then it, it's healing pretty fast. But basically, what I have to do now is I have to poke myself in the morning right when I wake up before I eat or drink anything. And then I can eat my breakfast. And then two hours after I eat my breakfast, I have to poke myself and check my sugar again. And I can eat my lunch. And then two hours after that, I have to check my sugar. And then I can eat my dinner. And two hours after that, I can check my sugar. Actually, I have to check my sugar in about 45 minutes. I have a timer on my phone. So I'll never forget. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty good about checking, but just in case, I don't want to forget for any reason. Like, if I get busy or something. So, I have a timer on my phone. After I eat two hours exactly, I'll, um, check my sugar. So, I feel like it zoomed in on my face or something. Or I'm just awkwardly close. So, a lot of things can happen. Sorry. Being, a uh, diabetic while pregnant. When you become a diabetic and you're pregnant, one thing for sure is your baby grows faster. Like, I don't know the scientific reason why, but your baby grows faster so they get bigger. And my fiance was already born at 11 pounds and 13 ounces. So I was already probably gonna have a big baby, but no matter what, I'm having a big baby now. And because of that, I'm most likely gonna have to get a C-section and I'm honestly okay with getting a C-section. It doesn't sound as scary as the rest of the birthing plans that I've heard. So I'm not opposed to a C-section. I was kind of actually hoping I would get a C-section. Which might sound a little weird to some people. But there's a lot of... I don't even really know where to begin. There's a lot of things that happen to you while you're um a diabetic while pregnant i am for one on a super strict diet if i don't stick to this diet a lot of things can happen to me and to my baby so that's really bad so i'm on a 2200 calorie diet which is basically uh a normal person supposed to be eating anyways so that's really good but it's really strict and also really lenient and i'm going to explain that so, it's really strict as in you need to have, like, one starch in the morning and, like, you should have this kind of fruit or only this much or only this thing and only so much meat in the morning. And then, like, for your lunch, you can only have this much and this much and this much. But, like, the things that you're actually eating is kind of more lenient. So, it's a little more lenient, so that's good. I'm sorry, I'm going to lay down because on my side now because I'm feeling kind of... Uh, woozy. I've been nauseous all day. So that's not good. But um. It's just. A lot to take in. Because a lot of things can happen. So. I have to make sure my sugar doesn't get too high. For one. Or I'm going to start taking medication. And if medication doesn't work. Then I start taking insulin. And the bad thing is. If I can't get my sugar down. And keep it down throughout my pregnancy. Because your baby already produces insulin, then your baby will have to get sugar and more sugar while um, right after they're born. And that can be really bad for them. Another thing is my baby can be born with birth defects in the brain because I didn't stick to my diet. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. I don't know the, the scientific reason. She just had to tell me these things. And I wasn't going to ask a lot of questions because I was like, I'm going to stick to my diet. So, um... Here's another thing. Um, I mean, I can miscarry if I don't stick to my diet. Which obviously, I'm going to stick to my diet. There's just a lot of bad things that can happen. So, I had to do an EKG to check if my heart was okay first. And I did my EKG. And you'll see in this clip. And my EKG is normal. I turned it into my doctor and she said it was normal. So, that's good. Um, I have to turn in my urine, which I actually did today. I had to pee 24 hours in this jug. It was really weird. But it's to check your kidneys and a bunch of other things. Just to make sure your kidneys aren't failing on you. 
and then after I give birth, I have to pee in a jug for 24 hours again just to check on my kidneys once more to make sure they're not failing on me right after I give birth because that is a thing that could happen um, right after I give birth because I'm a diabetic. I can't um, have my kidneys fail and that's honestly really scary. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to cry because I cried so much already over this. It's really scary, and, uh, I just, it's a lot to take in at one time, and now I have to get my eyes checked by an optometrist, not like the person who gives you your glasses or your contacts, but the person that does eye surgery. They have to check my eyes because my eyes can go bad. I already have problems seeing, so that's also scary. I'm not trying to jump to conclusions or anything, but it's just the idea of things that can happen and me trying my best to make sure things are okay. So it's hard. I'm having a rough time. Um, I'm sticking to my diet and my sugar is going down. It is. It's, and it's good. It's been staying around 80 today. And almost got up to 90, but it's it's pretty much staying down today, so that's really good. Um, I hit 107 yesterday at the very end of my day. I ate a bomb pop, and a bomb pop has a lot of sugar in it, but it was at 67 right before that. So it went from 67 to 107. And well, that's diabetes for you. <laughs> so it's a lot of trial and error, and me doing this new diet and my body fluctuating still and trying to um get used to it so my sugar's gonna kind of be weird I'm gonna kind of be nauseous for a while I'm sorry I'm trying so hard not to cry on camera today I couldn't record this earlier because I kept crying. I was so upset. I am so terrified of needles. Which, if you know me in real life, you know. Like, I have tattoos, but it's it's not the same. It's like a needle, like, actually, like, giving me, like, a shot or taking my blood. It's, it scares me. Because when I was younger, I had to be in the hospital for a, a long time, and it kind of traumatized me. And, um, Having to poke myself four times a day is really hard. And I'm getting used to it. But the first day, I had three panic attacks. <laughs> That's, it's not funny, but seriously. I had three panic attacks. Just trying to take my own blood. And my mom had to help me. And I still was freaking out. I still couldn't breathe right after and it was it was really hard it's getting better like i can do it myself now and i can breathe now but like i still feel so emotional god damn it i still feel so emotional after and um I know everyone's going to ask, are you going to be a diabetic after your pregnancy? I don't know. I I won't know until after I give birth. Once I give birth, I have to do another glucose tolerance test. And um, if I don't pass again, then we'll find out if I'm a type 1 or type 2 diabetic. So, diabetes runs in my family. It's no one, like really close relatives to me like it was my grandfather's brothers and sisters and it kind of stopped there but it doesn't mean it can't jump generations either and being a diabetic and already having such a hard pregnancy and already being so woozy and already not being able to work and being on bed rest and having IBS it's It's really hard. It's really hard, guys. 
I'm just trying my best right now to uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry to keep saying basically and uh working really hard on my diet because I don't want anything to happen to the baby I don't want anything to happen to me either but you know I just I don't want anything to happen so I mean, that's about it. I don't really know what else to say right now. I'll keep you guys updated. That's about it. I don't I don't really know what else to say. Oh, um, actually before I go, somebody on my Instagram said I should do a GoFundMe. But I don't know if anybody would actually want to donate money to me I mean you know like it would be really nice if people did donate because I'm so far behind on bills and I can't work and half of my fiance's check goes towards gas still because finding a job out here is really hard and he can't transfer again so it's just it's a lot I'm dealing with a lot you know, with my fiance working night shift and me being on a day schedule, we don't get to see each other much, and it's it's just a lot right now for me. But um, if anybody would like to donate, that would be really nice because we owe over two thousand to our old apartment. We owe money <laughs> for my phone. That's probably going to be shut off soon. I got so much money on my car notes still. And we still pay rent. Like, I still pay rent at my parents' house, too. Well, he pays rent for the both of us at, our parent, at my parents' house. So it's not like we're not paying bills, so I still gotta pay. Well, he's paying for my car note and my phone bill. And then rent here. And extra groceries and stuff. And it's just... And then the rest just goes towards gas. So every time he gets a paycheck, it's gone, like, the same day. So if he would like to donate, that'd be really nice. And I am going to set up GoFundMe. I just, I don't know if anybody would, would want to donate, you know. And I feel so bad asking for money. But it would help so much. Especially with all of this going on now. I really know what to do. I'm trying to stay, you know, positive throughout everything. But it's getting a little hard. I, mean, I guess that's about it. Bye, guys. I love you. I'll see you. In the next video, and hopefully the next video is happier. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna just leave this video here because I feel like I'm holding in so much right now. I just gotta